Welcome to Azor Banhammers. Far to opening hand goes. Yeah, love it. We've got Monastery Mentor. We've got more than enough lands to get down uh, Azor and tap out for some really nice Sphinx Reb. Um, let's go ahead and lead off with the, I guess, the Port Town. That'd be okay. Or we can go Marsh Flats and grab a, uh, a Fetch Land or something. Uh, yeah, let's just simply just go ahead and get down the, um, we'll go for Port Town. Let's get Port Town down. Reveal the Tundra. I don't know why it was that hard of a decision. We're going to go for Monastery Mentor next turn anyway off the Ancient Tomb. So, anyways, welcome to Azor Banhammer. Hope you're excited for some blue-white control. Uh, we are playing Azor, the Law Bringer. Bringer of Law. Any law you got, he'll bring it to you. Uh, whenever Azor enters the battlefield, he should actually cover that in a sec. Uh, just dumb. Um, let's go and get down the Ancient Tomb. Let's go for Monastery Mentor. And let's get those uh, let's get those those uh, monk tokens going. Yes, I'm liking that. And then I'll cover Azor, and then we're going to go and pass the turn. We're playing Azor the Lawbringer. So whenever he enters the battlefield, each opponent can't cast um, instant or sorcery spell during that player's next turn. And then whenever Azor attacks, you may pay Sphinx Rev if you do. Actually, X, uh, white, blue, blue. If you do, gain X life and you draw X cards. Play oh, opponents got their own Ancient Tomb. Excuse me. Uh, we're playing against Pedium, Council of Innovation. Uh, artifacts you control have hex at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control the artifact with the highest converted mana cost or time for the highest converted mana cost, draw a card. All right. So we got Monastery Mentor. Um, let's go ahead and get down. Uh, do we want to swing in for two? We're going to have Prowess if we go for that. Thirst for Knowledge. We'll get a Monk Token onto the battlefield. Um, is that what we're going to do this turn? Yeah, let's go ahead and go for that. Let's go ahead and go for Thirst for Knowledge. It's going to be blue. I'm going to get that Monk Token going. I'm okay with that. We'll get that Prowess. Again, that, may, that extra damage may make a difference in the end. All right. So we got Prowess. It's going to be 3-3. Three, three. We're going to go for Thirst for Knowledge. Ooh, beautiful, beautiful hand. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, do we want Wrath of God? We've got um, Path to Exile to kind of take care of that. Let's go ahead and get rid of Cryptic Command at this point. We don't have any artifacts to get rid of. So we're going to get rid of Cryptic Command. And I really like Dragon Lord Ojitai in this one. Um, Temple of the False Gods actually not that bad. We do have the, this going to be 1, 2, Three, four, five. Yeah, we'll actually go ahead and get rid of Marsh Flats. Okay, I like that. Let's go and swing in for three. Get the monk coming across, put him down to 25, and then we're going to go and pass the turn. But yes, we cover both commanders free time. We can talk about whatever we want. And that's going to be Azor Banhammer. Uh, why is it Banhammer? Because this is pretty much just blue white control. As you can tell, we got Supreme Verdict in the hand, Cryptic Command. Um, I did build blue white control a while back with Tomat, which is a lot of fun building a Tomat style deck. But um, it was just a little bit clunky kind of sometimes. And so we have Azor, which is um, makes for a really good uh, finisher. Anything we want to go for this turn. Um, let's go and swing in for three. Unfortunately, we don't have any way to kind of trigger prowls. We could go for Path to Exile, but that really wouldn't be in our best interest. Uh, let's go and swing in for three. Let's go and put him down to 20. And then let's go and get down that Windswept Heath. I think I like that. Yeah, we'll get down to the Windswept Heath, and then we're going to go and pass the turn. So uh, we can crack the Windswept Heath and grab the um, the dual land that comes into play taps. Cannot remember the name of it. Irrigated Farmland, I think. That might be it. Let that come into play, and then we'll be able to get down Dragon Lord Ojitai, start swinging in, and then uh, on the back end, go for Azor the Lawbringer. Now, as far as Padium goes, they've got a lot of artifacts on the battlefield. They will be able to get Padium down this turn if they want to go for it, which they, in fact, they are going. Um, yeah, that's fine. And then Padium will have, um, does not have Hexproof at this point right now. They've got three cards in the hand. I actually don't mind running Pat to Exile into Padium at the end of our turn. It's going to give him an extra land, but I think I'm okay with it at this point. They can still tap out for it. Mainly just want to tie them up on mana. Uh, let's go and crack the Windswept Teeth. Let's go and grab that Prairie Stream. Yeah, that's fine. Grab Prairie Stream. Let's go and go for Path to Exile and Padium. The Lady. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Padium's a Lady. <laughs> And then also we're going to get that Prowess, the uh, the Monastery Monk token on the battlefield too, which is really good. There we go. Get that going. Get the Monk token. And we're going to take care of Padium. But yeah, I'm pretty sure she's a lady. I think somebody explained that to me one time. Yeah, it's a little old grandma lady, but she's a pretty funny looking dude, or funny looking person. Um, we're going to go for Path to Exile. There we go. Sends it back to the command zone. Hopefully, they'll kind of spend a little bit more mana next turn trying to get down Padium, which is going to allow us to kind of tap out for Dragon Lord Ojitai, and then follow up with Azor the Lawbringer, start swinging in. But you can see Azor's police state, the monks, and they, uh, Pretty gnarly out there. This is actually my first time getting to cast Monastery Mentor, so I'm actually going to be able to cross that off my magic bingo list here at the end of the match. Um, let's go ahead and get down the Tundra. Uh, we got Jace, but I still like going for Dragon Lord Ojitai on this one. We want to really kind of put a clock on our opponent. Um, let's go ahead and swing in. That's going to be four coming across. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any way to trigger Prowse, otherwise that'd be a pretty devastating turn to swing in, especially something like Frantic Search. All right, get him down to 16. Let's go ahead and go for Dragon Lord Ojitai. 
tap out, and that's going to be one, two. That way, if something does happen, maybe they target Monastery Mentor, they go for Echoing Truth, bouncing the monks back to the hand. At least Dragon Lord Ojutai will have Hexproof um, as it's untapped, and then we can swing in next turn. Alright, opponent's going to go for Wayfarer's Bobble Crack. But yeah, outside of that, we just have a few finisher flyers in the deck. You can see we have Dragonlord Ojutai on the battlefield. Uh, we also have Archangel of Thune. Um, and then Monastery Mentor. We're also running the Dawson of Perfection, which is going to be the, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you'll be able to get some good... Ooh, opponent's going to go for Ugin. Alright. They're going to be able to go for the minus X ability, so that's going to clear our entire board state out. Uh, luckily, we'll be online for Temple of the False God and for Jace the Mind Sculptor. We do need to find a way to deal with Ugin, though. Opponent's going to go for, <laughs> opponent's going to go for Bribery. Um, we'll see on that one. Actually, let's let them resolve this. We'll see if they put on the battlefield. Okay, and our opponent does search up Arch Angle... Uh, Arch... <laughs> Archangel of the I cannot tell you like the struggle is real trying to pronounce Archangel instead of Archangel I don't know why this just <laughs> it, it just gets me man it's like getting down scavenging ooze on a graveyard full of creatures I just cannot get past that okay now as far as this turn our opponent went for bribery they did get Archangel of Thune onto the battlefield we have Jay so we can actually return that creature back to our hand um, if we want to so I actually feel pretty confident in um, that's gonna be one two three four five six yeah let's go and get the land drop down let's go for polluted delta I like getting down Azor it's gonna keep them off any sort of counter magic they're gonna be able to go for um, hollowed fountain we're gonna shock that one in the irrigated farmland it's gonna end the battlefield tapped either way yeah, let's go ahead and go for Hollowed Fountain. We might need that blue mana in some form or fashion. We're going to pay two life, especially with us having Temple of the False God in the hand. Uh, let's go double white, double blue, and perfect. Get down that Ancient Tomb. Let's go for one, two. Okay, so Azor's going to enter the battlefield. It's going to keep our opponent from casting any sort of instant or sorcery spells, bouncing it back to the hand. Um, they do have Archangel and Thune down, but once we go for Jay, so we'll at least be able to bounce it back to our hand and start taking advantage of those Sphinx wraps. Our opponent's going to go for three damage to us off that Ugin. And we definitely, high priority, want to take care of Ugin. That's one thing that we definitely want to go for. So um, then if things get a little bit crazy, let's say they do get PDM down after we swing in or they get some crazy board state. At least we still have, um, let's get that popped out just a little bit. Now they've got down the Sword of Feast and Famine. Uh, we still have Supreme Verdict, dude. You kind of go for a little bit of a board reset if we need to. Now with the Sword of Feast and Famine, deals combat damage and untap a land, excuse me, discard a land discard a card and untap all lands that you control so see if they're going to swing in in this one or simply leave up archangel as some sort of some sort of a blocker for ugin um if it's me i guess i would still probably go and swing in i don't know it depends on how okay they are they highly value ugin on this in this particular matchup so this uh, jace play is definitely going to be a pretty good play for us um, let's go and get down the temple of the false god and let's go and go for jace and it's going to be double blue and then double blue off that temple of the false god Go for Jace. We're going to be able to use that minus one ability on Archangel. It has protection from black and green, but Jace is going to be blue, which is going to allow us to go back to our hand. So we're going to send Archangel back. Uh, we're going to be able to swing in with the Zor. There we go. Take care of that Ugin. I uh, do have to watch out for Sword of Feast and Famine, though. Um, and in fact, I guess, well, actually, we're not going to have the colored mana to go for Supreme Verdict. So we can actually go and get down Mystic Study and then kind of go from there. Let's go and swing in at uh, Ugin. And that's going to put them at only one card in the hand, too. So we're going to swing in at Ugin. It's going to be a 6 6 body. I'm not going to pay for that mana. No, we're, we're good, Azor. Always feel bad. Can't pay for that one. We're going to hit Ugin down to zero with that 6-6 six, six flyer. There we go. And then we'll have Jace to kind of get a little bit of extra value. I'm just going to get down that Rhystic Study. That's going to be 1-2 and then blue off that. So they have tons of mana out there, but at least we'll kind of put that little extra tax on them and that Adventure's Fair. See what our opponent said. Hey, <laughs> you too. Just saw that. All right, let's get that closed out. <laughs> yeah, and our opponent said, hey, I stole her fair and square. <laughs> yeah, no, she she wanted to come back, man. She wanted to go back on this side of the law. All right, so we have Inventor's Fair. Um, they're going to be able to gain that life. They can, they do have the, technically, met, not metal craft, but they have three or more artifacts. So they will be able to kind of search up some sort of artifact. If they want to go for Spine, that's something that they could search up. Uh, potential, I don't know if they'll actually have the mana for that. Uh, we're looking at one, two, uh, three... And then Devotion right now is really not that good. So we'll see what they're going to kind of uh, come up for with this turn. Okay, Pudge is going to go for Sword of Feast and Famine. That's going to be a 3-6 coming across uh, with, with Hexproof. Now with us swinging in next turn, this is going to be 6 in the air. And that's going to put them down to 7. Let's see where they swing in. They will be swinging in at Jace. Now the good thing about them swinging in at Jace is that um, they're not going to get that Sword of the Feast, uh, Sword of Feast and Famine trigger. Because it has to be dealt on combat damage um, to a player. I know I've learned the hard way. 
<laughs> I get a turn set up and I'm getting ready to go for a good sort of feast and famine trigger. And I'm like, oh yeah, there is no, uh, no planeswalker included in that tech. So you got to watch out for that. Um, let's see what they're tapping out for. There's two cards in the hand and, um, Avengers fair. Okay. Now they do have one, two, three, four. They've got five total mana. Um, I'm really not sure what sort of artifact kind of gets them out of this potential Videlican shackles. Okay. They'll be able to get that down and, uh, see if they're going to pay for one off that one. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five. They do have five islands on the battlefield, so they're not going to be able to gain control of Zor. Um, yes, we're going to use that ability. Um, at this, yeah, at this point, they're not going to be able to gain control of it. So at least we're going to be able to swing in, depending on what we draw into. We might end up going for a pretty nice, uh, might end up going for Supreme Verdict on the back end. But if we go for Archangel, uh, we'll be able to get a few counters on some of our creatures. All right, drawn to Worn Power Stone. And let's go ahead and get down the Mana Confluence. Yeah, I think I like doing this. Let's go and swing in with the Zor. That's going to be six in the air. It's going to put him down to five. And if we tap out for a really big... Um, yeah, I like tapping out for a really big Sphinx Rev. You know, if they do make the land drop for the turn and gain control of a Zor, um, it's not the end of the world. We do have Homeward Path in here, so maybe we can make that for our land drop, gain control of a Zor. Yeah, let's go and do that. I'd like to get a lot of cards off this one. That's going to be uh, the tap out for white. And that's going to be uh, one, two... And they swing it for three. Yeah, we can survive this hit next turn. Putting this down to basically 10 for three. Puts this down to seven. It's going to be, one. yes, we're going to pay for that. Yeah, the way they do the trigger is really weird. You have to pay the colored mana first. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's, been a, it's caught me off guard a couple times. I uh, pay for blunt, white, and then two off the ancient tomb. So, we're looking at a Zor, um, Sphinx Red for six. We're going to gain that life. Ooh, and treat the angel. So, we can actually go for that next turn and not really worry about any sort of shackles, uh, shenanigans from our opponent. All right. Get him for six. It's going to put him down to five. And then let's see what our opponent said. <laughs> Just one more island. Exactly. We noticed that. I didn't, don't really want that going on. And the Mother of Runes is a little bit late to the party, unfortunately. Um, but as far as what we've got going on in the hand, we'll definitely get rid of um, Worn Power Stone for sure. And we'll get rid of some of the other lands. Um, let's go and get rid of the Worn Power Stone. Get rid of the Plains. We're okay on an island. Yeah, and we'll leave that last island in the hand. All right. So our opponent's going to have that on the battlefield. Let's see if they rip into that last little island to gain control of Zor. Um, they'll definitely have it. Let's see if they get the untap step. Um, yeah, they're simply just going to be able to gain control of it. So it's not too bad. Once we go for the Supreme Verdict, we'll be able to blow it up. Or simply just tapping out for a really big and treat the angel. So we're looking at triple white. This is going to be one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're actually going to be able to get three angels onto the battlefield. Um, even if they do get another flyer down uh, somehow, they're not going to be able to... Um, Stop at least three angels onto the battlefield. And then once we get on Mother of Runes, we'll be able to gain some... Actually, excuse me, we'll have to name a color off Mother of Runes, which is not going to protect us from shackles. So let's see what else they're going to go for. They're going to go for the Sculptor. Okay, get that down. And then if they don't pay for the one, we'll get an additional uh, card draw off the Rhystic Study too. But yeah, this is pretty much what you want to do. You know, the Azor's ability, it is a little clunky as a blue-white control player to kind of completely tap out on your turn to draw some cards. But you're at the point of the game to where, let's say our opponent's only sitting at, uh, you know, they had one card in the hand. Um, they had to crack one of their Hedron Archive to draw some cards. So it's going to allow us to basically kind of just refuel our hand and hopefully outvalue our opponent. You know, let's say we hit something like Monastery Mentor. We get that down, start casting some tokens. Uh, discard a card. We'll go and get rid of the um, get rid of the worn power stone. I'm going to make a land drop on that one. Now we do need to deal with sword of peace and famine. That will kind of uh, get to us just a little bit with them having that untap step and all that mana. But let's see, we draw two draw two swords to plowshares. Okay, let's do this. Let's go and get the island down. Now, whenever a Zor attacks, yeah, we're going to be able to pay that mana. Let's see if they go for the shackles activation. Actually, let's go and force the issue. Yeah, let's go and push in. I'm going to swing in for a 6-6 body. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any way to kind of stop that activated ability. But I like going for a Supreme Verdict on the back end. Yeah, I think I like that. All right, they're going to go for Videlic and Shackles. Uh, they're going to gain control of the Zor. Let's go and go for that Supreme Verdict. And then if they do recast Pidium, um, we do have Swords of Plowshare to uh, kind of make sure that doesn't happen. Let's go um, white, white, and then blue. And then we'll tap out on the Ancient Tomb. There we go. I'm going to go for Supreme Verdict. It's going to blow up all the creatures. It's going to send Azor back to the command zone. That's going to be the Sculptor and um, Padim going back to the command zone too. And that's going to be one to we'll at least be able to triple white off of that and then end up with at least one angel token to swing in. That's going to be a 4-4 angel. Or if we simply get down the... Actually, let's do it this way. Get down Archangel. That's going to be a 3-4 
we can swing in with that and then um we still leaves a source to plowshare to kind of stop any sort of sword of peace and fame maybe they get down lightning greaves or something like that they're gonna be able to swing in with some sort of haste option i like that we can get down the archangel if we can gain life somehow that'd be great um actually we can actually just cast a zor now that i think about it. it's gonna be eight total mana um, let's see, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we're going to have 10 total mana. Uh, we could actually simply actually just cast a Zor, gain that life. And whatever we gain life, we're going to be able to put a plus 1 counter on each creature you control. Now that's only going to get us 1 counter. It'll make it a uh, at least a 4 or 5, but that's something that if we get a few more creatures down somehow and gain a little bit more life, we can kind of go from there. Let's see what our opponent's going to tap out for. We're going to go for extra play near lens, okay. Okay, an opponent's going to tap out for Padilla, and then they'll have that Rhystic Study trigger coming down too. Now, at this point right now, if they go to equip Sword of Feast and Famine on there, we're definitely going to go for Swords of Plowshare in response to that. They are going to gain a little bit of life, but with us tapping out for maybe Entreat the Angels next turn, I like going for that. And then, um, there we go. We're going to go for Swords of Plowshares, tap out for blue, tap out for white, excuse me, exile that creature. That way we can just kind of mess with their mana this turn. Now they did get down the extra planar lens on island, um, so we're at least going to be able to tap our one basic island for double mana. That's going to allow us maybe get us a few extra angel tokens off the battlefield off that and treat the angels. And they are sitting at three total mana at this point right now. Okay. I like it. I'm drawn to Halimar Depths. Um, let's go ahead and get down. Let's go and swing it for a 3-4 body at this point. Yeah, I like it. 3-4 in the air. We'll swing in, and then we'll see how much we actually want to tap out for. Actually, excuse me, Videlic and Shackles. Oh, yeah, excuse me, I keep forgetting about the uh, the Shackles out there. We'll be able to gain control of the Angel. Okay, they're going to get that. And then, yeah, I like going for Entreat the Angels on this one. Let's let's go for that. Let's go to get down the Halimar Depths, look at the top three cards, and then hopefully just keep our fingers crossed that our opponent does not have something like Cyclonic Rift out there. Um, it's going to be Spell Swindle, Tygam, and then Op. Let's go ahead and put down... Tie game. Let's go for opt, and then we'll leave spell swindle up. That way, if something happens next turn, we can do that. Let's go for a treat the angels. It's going to be one, two, three, three white. It's going to be one, two, uh, three, four, five, six. Let's tap the mana this way. We're looking at triple white, and then one, two, three, four. And then five six off the ancient tomb. So it's going to be entreat the angels. It's going to be triple white. It's kind of having us tap out, kind of weird for a second. Uh, one two. X is going to be three, and we'll go for one more. There we go. All right. So we're going to put four angels onto the battlefield. It's going to be really hard for them to get enough fidelic and shackles. They've only gained one of our creatures with the archangel, and then wind up with four angels. Anything else? We're going to go and pass turn. Now we are sitting at seven, which is a little bit. Sus not suspect, but uh, we need to be a little bit careful. But thankfully, we're just playing against an artifact deck. And uh, with Academy Ruins, there's not really anything too crazy out there that they're going to be able to go for. So let's see what they kind of get down this turn. Okay, our opponent's going to throw the good game up. They did not draw anything to deal with the four angels onto the battlefield. So definitely see, you know, this is more of a traditional build of Azor, but sometimes it's, you know, it's okay not to get too crazy in Commander and just kind of build a fun uh, blue-white control style deck, which we definitely did. We got a good board wipe in, and we also got paid full sticker price for you and treat the angels, so I'll definitely take that. In fact, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.